So to get started, it's my pleasure to kick off the program with a fireside chat between Suzanne Branica, advertising editor of the Wall Street Journal, if you guys want to come up, and Rashad Tabakawala, chief growth officer at Publicis Media. Now, I don't know if you guys uh, read Rashad's blog, but it's, uh, it's definitely worth it. And the title is that the future does not fit into the containers of the past. So we're very lucky to have him here to help us consider if we're building these right containers for the future. Better sign up for that blog right away. You're going to put a subscription on there sooner or later. Good morning. So I think we should start off because I feel like in the last six months, the sort of whole universe of media has been sort of upended. We've been on an M&A rampage. So I know uh, Rashad for probably longer than we both care to admit. Could you give us all a level set about what we're looking at for the future of media, right? We're in a M&A boon right now. You've got deals happening like, or could be happening like AT&T, uh, Time Warner, Disney Fox, uh, continue consolidation on the digital publishing side for all various reasons. What is media gonna look like even a year from now or five years from now? You know, it's somewhat hard to predict, but I think if you follow two, two directional things, which is people and technology <laughs> rather than companies, you're more likely to get there because companies change, leadership changes, and strategies change. So I think the first thing with regard to people, and this statement may be either completely scary or incorrect, and I don't think it's incorrect, uh, is we're going to basically increasingly have less and less advertising, okay? Uh, we're gonna move more and more into the ability to interact with someone through an impression-based advertising declining significantly. I would say between 20 to 30% decline in the next three to five years, if not more. Uh, and that is not just because of things like ad blocking, et cetera, but strategically, Apple will do everything to stop Google, which basically they will try to make their environments both privacy compliant and ad free, which is number one. And number two is because we are so disrespecting people's time, they're spending more and more of their time in ad-free environments, which are things like Netflix and, and other kinds of stuff. So the ability to have advertising, I think, is gonna decline by about 30% or more in the next five years. So that's one, one thing. Uh, because people, uh, we don't value their time. If you take all the advertising dollars and you sort of divide it by the amount of money we pay, it's less than minimum wages, so it makes no sense. Uh, so you're asking me to give you my time for less than minimum wages. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two, when you look at it from a technology perspective, I was at CES and I sort of written up what the key trends from CES were. And we're sort of entering this, what I call the third connected age. Um, and if the first connected age was built around the link, so if you sort of think about Google monetize the link better than anybody else, and the second connected age, which is what we are really suffering from or seeing the impact of occurred in 2007 with uh, both uh, the rise of social networks and smartphones. The two companies that monetize that well are Apple and Facebook. So Google, Apple, Facebook, three of the five most powerful companies. Or, uh, and then because Amazon played around all around, so you've got now Amazon as the fourth. Yeah. Uh, so where is this going? So the third connected age, is also going to be about data connecting to data, and that is basically what AI is. AI basically is data writes the software. That's that simple, right? And so what you're gonna basically see increasingly is that's one, things connecting to things, uh, which is the Internet of Things. And a big way of thinking about the Internet of Things, by the way, is not necessarily like small little laundry stuff. Think, for instance, about Uber, okay? Your thing, called a phone, connects to another thing called a car. Today, that thing called a car has a driver. In the near future, it will not have a driver. Mm. And at some stage, maybe your phone won't have you, and it'll just be things connecting to things. <laughs> uh, but that could be sort of the second one. And then the third is new ways of connecting. And this is the ramifications of where this business will go, yep. which is voice, AR, VR. And all of those are coming much faster than any of us anticipate. So if you sort of follow technology and you follow people, 
there'll be some significant differences in the way we measure things. So sort of to summarize, I would say, increasingly we keep thinking about segmentation, but in the distributed world, it's no longer segmentation, it's re-aggregation. So we're, how do we get audiences of one and build them up into large enough audiences versus take large audiences and make them into smaller audiences? So historically, what all of us have done is we've been in the segmentation business. So you start with a car when you get a steak. <coughs> the re-aggregation business is you start with a piece of mince and you get a hamburger, okay? So that's one change. The second is we've been in the business of impressions. Incre increasingly, you're beginning to see that we're gonna go into the business of interactions. Yeah. Okay, so that's the second key shift. And then the third key shift, which is what you're beginning to see, is less and less are people measuring a program or a channel or a network. They're trying to figure out how do they measure an individual over time. Yep. Uh, and those are the three key, key drivers. So, so the good news is we don't actually need cross-platform measurement because there'll be no advertising. So we could all, and now less and we can all go to drinks. Yeah, okay. so, yeah, so but, advertising is a long-term decline, but marketing a, is good. I agree, I think right. advertising is going away, but there is going to be a point where the companies like a Netflix, there are people that will say like, growth is growth, and when their growth and users run out, they're clearly, you don't envision them ever coming up with an advertising model. I don't see them coming up as an advertising model. I see more and more people dropping advertising as a model. And the, the reality of it is, if you watch enough Netflix or you watch anything, what's the most terrible thing that you ever have to do is basically watch one of these apps from CBS or others which have ads on it. Yeah. And what do you do? You basically see the, see, see the same ad four times. Well, that's right? just a bad user experience. No, but it's not just, a, but the, the whole idea is you get so irritated, it's like, why are these people doing this shit, yeah. right? So my, my, my whole thing is, is, is I really, the, the truth of the matter is advertising was basically, a, advertisers underwrote content because it was the only way to get to people. Yep. Okay, if there's other ways to get to people, they're gonna do it. Okay, so let's, for the short time until so that we all have jobs, let's talk about what we need to do as an industry to sort of solve this issue that we keep dancing around and saying we're getting there, we're getting there, and then we're not even prepared for the new things that are coming, AI, voice. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about the barriers, right? We've been talking about the wall gardens for as long as I can remember. How do marketers, how do we get to this cross measurement that we're all seeking if these wall gardens won't open to the degree that we need them to open? I think the single biggest thing is marketers, and this is what I know the ANA is going to be here later. Um, I think the biggest single thing is marketers need to understand that it's their money, and I don't understand why marketers are treated as servants by these companies, okay? It's my, if I'm giving you the money and you're basically saying, I'll, the way the big platforms now deal with marketers is much worse than the way marketers deal with agencies. <laughs> it's that bad, <laughs> okay? And so my whole stuff is like man up or woman up basically and say it's your money. If you want them to change, stop spending. Right, but yeah, the rest of it is just press announcements. We've been hearing this for 18 months, right? I mean, they're on their hind legs on multiple fronts, right? Political, fake news, advertiser, uh, wrong impressions, uh, bad content. But yet, and they're on their hind legs. Uh, hind legs, 61% uh, growth yesterday in profit. I mean, hind legs, people. Do you think that we're at a moment in time that advertisers are willing to go here and put their money where their mouth is? Or is it, are we still at the point where no one gets fired for buying Facebook? I would expect at least, so when I was at Davos this year, the amount of opposition across all groups of people, which you would not expect, because the Davos crowd is, you know, economics and rich people mostly, uh, they were so opposed, whether it was George Soros or Mark Benioff or Nobel Prize winners against what the platforms are doing, they see it as basically a bad thing for the economy, okay? So I'm beginning to sense that there are some things that are going on, but also recognize that there is a game and then there is another game. So right now, if you looked at Facebook's earnings, they increased the price 47%. Okay, they got for this last quarter $6 more per user. Yep. So they're gonna basically use this so-called political stuff to actually increase pricing. 
Okay, so I think there are gonna be three key things that are gonna make marketers stand up. And unfortunately, the marketer is not likely gonna be the CMO, it's gonna be the CEO and the CFO, right? The CEO and the CFO are gonna basically say, are these companies taking away economic value for us, from us in very large swaths? That's the reason why all the people in Davos are upset, because they're basically seeing massive money flow from them to these platforms, it's nothing else, right? So it's basically that, so are you taking away money from me? That's number one. Number two, which is something I've said for a long time and people were laughing, yeah. no one's coming to disrupt the agencies. We're so pathetic, nobody should spend nobody time. Nobody wants to, their margins. Nobody wants our margins <laughs> and nobody wants us. These platforms are basically coming to disrupt our clients. That's what now they're beginning to understand. They are here to disrupt the business because the only way they're gonna grow is go into these businesses, if, if this makes sense. So the CEO is gonna basically say, prices are going up. I have this economic value transfer that's going on. And oh, by the way, now it's probably safe to ask them what's going on. So I would anticipate this there. And also at the same time, every client is starting to try to create their own data platforms. They're going to, I think, going to find ways to create, you know, ways to switch and trade data, uh, which will be allowed again, right? Right. Uh, and so I, ha I have a sense that over the next three to four years, it's going to happen because you cannot say that data is the future, but only two or three companies dominate it. It just doesn't make sense. Right. Uh, some of your counter counterparts at other holding companies have been calling for sort of coalitions and not not another press release coalition, but real data coalitions, whether it's through traditional media companies coming together, pooling data together, um, and, and clients pooling data. But yet, history has shown me, covering this business as long as I have, you know, these coalitions or the promise to work together never fully comes to fruition. Are we at a point where legacy media companies or clients who are under pressure from active investors like we're at the last part of our rope, do you think we're at a point where they're going to definitely come together? Can you I, see that? I think some of them will come together, but the other thing that's happening is more and more of them are selling directly, okay? And once you start selling directly, you begin to understand <laughs> the real power of what the data is. So what is, what is starting to happen is, you're seeing major CPG companies who have goals of having 25% of their sales by 2020, right, direct. And what is, what is you're beginning, and once you begin to have that, you begin to have some very interesting sort of leverage, which is number one. The other is, the, there's this other little puppy in the kind of kennel called Amazon, okay? Right. Uh, that's basically gonna come in, a, in somewhat of a big way. And the, 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 the reality of it is, people are gonna start recognizing that the single most important thing that actually happens is the relationship that someone has with their customer or consumer, and they will try to figure out new ways of doing it. And at some particular stage, while competitors won't necessarily join, because I think for traditionally, they should, because if you actually think about it, I think most people don't realize that the three German car companies, yeah. right, who hate each other, BMW, Mercedes, and Audi, actually together run year maps. Mm. They bought year maps because in effect, they began to realize that their competitor is mapping companies and, and Uber and not each other, right? And so as soon as people begin to realize that my competitor is not this person, right? So here was Gillette thinking their competitor was Sheik, but really it was basically Facebook and Tabula enabled Dollar Shave Club. Right. I mean, isn't that a big concern, right? Like these companies that they've built up using the marketers' information, data, and their money. What if the platforms decided to launch companies? They, they definitely are going to be on the verge of doing it. So give you an idea. If you are a startup in the, the West, okay, forget about China, but if you're, let's say, in the, United, in the United States, the likelihood of it is the following, that your, many of your, your web services are on Amazon, Many of your algorithms are on Amazon. Your distribution and logistics are done on Amazon. Some of your lower cost workers are mechanical Turks done on Amazon. What prevents Amazon from basically funding the business then? Right. Well, you've got lots of advertisers on that, this side who are saying to us, you know, look, we need leverage. They're, and the holding company, some holding companies are pulling for Amazon to come in and sort of 
put some leverage back in the marketplace and you've got big CPG companies jumping on board with Amazon, but isn't that, like given the power and the data that they have, isn't that like a big sort of mistake? It, it is a mistake and the, the reason it is basically a mistake is very simply this, which is the more data you have in today's world, you can actually let those algorithms run, right? And you need a lot of like, across industry, across data. Because the big thing that we have to recognize is that while we all want to have, and we have many clients who want to have relationships with their customers, in most cases, customers, as I've always said, I don't want to have a relationship with Tylenol, I want my headache to go away, okay? And it's very hard to have a relationship with somebody who basically just wants to milk you for your money. You know, it's the equivalent of like, imagine if you had a relationship with, you know, your kids and the only thing they ever wanted was your money and the day you didn't have any they didn't talk to you. That is the relationship isn't it? Yeah but it is. <laughs> but, 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 but what basically happens is I understand you want a relationship and really want a relationship with my money and not with me. Okay. So in, in this case I think what's beginning to happen is people are beginning to understand that you can now launch like I'll give you, this is not completely true, but I'll just for the fun of it, I'll give you a statement. I don't know of any big American brand built over the last five years using television. Okay, uh, because what's basically it's being built is through experiences. And then you scale it afterwards through television. So now Google is a big advertiser, but it wasn't for many oh, years, wasn't. right? And so what's beginning to happen is the thing is turned completely upside down. And the television still matters, but it's turned upside down, not for new product introduction. The way you, you find new product introduction is you find as Dollar Shave Club did, these are the people Yep. And then sample them and they tell their friends and there you have the first parts of where this goes. With a lot of help from Proctor's data that was fed into the Facebook system. Absolutely, absolutely. And so what, what basically, and that is why I think people are going to wake up. Okay. You talk about data and how every company out there, that's all they want to talk to us, like we're harnessing our data, but yet are, are marketers really prepared for this first party data that they really need? I mean, I, I find it astounding that we're still talking about like McDonald's is launching an app, right? Like. It's McDonald's and they didn't have an app. Like how, how prepared in realistic terms are marketers to solve any of this? Because to me, there seems to be a big data, first party data lack. So all of, many marketers are paying a lot of attention to this because they're beginning to realize how important it is, right? And they should do as much of it as possible. But they're increasingly going to have to combine and partner and recognize that they're talking to people and they're not talking to customers. You know, one of the key things I talk about is you're marketing to the gods, you're not marketing to customers. The biggest problem is when you market to a customer, you see things, everything through the lens of your brand, right? Very few people define themselves through a brand. And so what is happening is the whole idea of correlation and con connecting, there is going to basically happen. There are going to be sort of partnerships and I think those are going to happen. But the biggest simple thing is recognizing how important data is, and the same client who basically tells me data is the new oil, right, then basically delivers the oil to their competitor. Makes no sense. Well, it's just kind of like when you used to go to the upfront and show the network how much money you had to spend and then ask them how much you needed to buy. It's kind of almost the same thing. Tell me a little bit about, um, when we talk about cross platform and we talk about the data and everybody's looking for this, you know, it's going to happen, there's going to be a provider. It seems we're going to get to a point where there isn't going to be a provider and that it's basically a scotch tape world and you as a marketer need to build what your cross-platform solution is going to be by scotch taping different parts together, right? Does that mean there's going to be winner, like it depends on how much money a company has that's going to actually solve this equation for them? And does it take, you know, only the, the top marketers will be able to really get true attribution, real cross-platform? It's always going to be like putting it together and it's always going to be progress versus perfection uh, because there's so many different constituencies and the world keeps changing. So there's going to be a steady state. What I think is going to happen is there are going to be ways that first of all, you're going to have to ask, what are you trying to do with your data, right? And so the whole idea is the single most important thing about data is to use it to ask the right questions. And interestingly, that is what clients or certain industries have unique. The data you have about your customers sometimes can make you ask the right questions. Then you can go collect the additional data for it. 
right? Which is, which is one of the key things that I think people have got to recognize. Then you patch it together on it. Uh, and the other one is, I think a big deal is do not underestimate the importance that companies are gonna to have to put into talent. Okay. Because the talent you rec require is not just data analysts, you basically need people who can communicate and tell stories with the data. And one of the key things I've always said, and I was mentioning it yesterday to one of the future panelists here, is a great story will always beat a good spreadsheet. Okay, and, but nothing can beat a great story in a great press sheet. And the, the reality of it is we become so data driven that we don't understand it's the refinement of the data is where the value is. And so a big part of it is I would invest as much in talented people, right? Where do they live? Some of them live in this room. No, but uh, we, we've been but saying this for a long time, for like the, the creative and the data and the tech all have to come together, right? But the way everything is structured, at least in the agency business, it's all siloed, right? We all know the tension that exists there. Now you've got clients that are like, I'm gonna do a better job by bringing it all in-house. And then you say to yourself, does a real smart, creative, talented, data geek really just want to go work at a company in Minnesota, right? Like, so is this, a, is, this a foul, is this ever really gonna happen given that you have all these hurdles sort of forcing these entities apart? Yeah, I think it's gonna happen because of two reasons. The first is a lot of the young people coming out of school yeah. uh, like this. The key stuff is you wanna basically get the hell out of the way of these people. The biggest problem is half of us, like I, for instance, have got out of the way of everybody because everybody around me is much more talented. But the reality of it is you have to basically recognize that the next generation of people know much more than you, which is what most companies don't do because they've already grown up. The other one is both at the client, and I definitely know in all the agency services, people are trying really hard to get rid of the silos, and it's not just because of minimizing duplication and eliminating costs, okay, which is what everybody thinks it is, but it also is you know, to a great extent, because in effect, you, I don't think you can in the future separate media from creative, mm -hmm. okay? That day is over, and so the, the, the entire idea is, and, and that is what this is all coming to, and once you have come at it, it becomes important. So what holding company blows it up and actually puts it back together? We are. <laughs> Marcel, I forgot. I'm not talking about Marcel, <laughs> I'm talking about other things. Okay. Uh, right. <laughs> Tell us, okay, so if we wanted to solve, let's just play pie in the sky. If we wanted to solve this dilemma today, and we really wanted to have a killer to come along, and you were the guy to do it, you're the investment banker, Look at the landscape now and tell me what you would put together. What would you go out and buy to solve this dilemma that we need to fix in terms of- So one of the things that currently exist and that are viable, I would start off with something like a company in Chicago called 4C, um, which basically recognizes that the future is both about television and social, okay? So I would start with one of those because they, they have a sort of an imprint on every ad that basically runs. Uh, they are not a managed service, which basically means they can work with both agencies and clients direct, with, with, with sort of data. So I'd have that as one part of it. The second is many of the companies that I hear are based on what questions you're trying to ask, because I would do this for a particular client or industry versus broadly. I would connect some of the companies that I hear, because many of the companies that I hear have a lot of very interesting solutions, but I think many of them don't know what problem they're trying to actually solve. Okay, and your, your problem has got to be very specific and that's when you, you, what you've got becomes important. The other one is I would definitely try to partner with someone like, but not necessarily, you know, with either an axiom, mm -hmm. right? Uh, someone who can basically create some sort of place where coalition can be. Mm -hmm. And then I would also hire some world-class regulators and lawyers because this <laughs> European GDPR is going to be a big deal. Oh, yeah. Now, does Nielsen or Comscore play in your equation or in your master blue plan? Yes. So, unfortunately, Comscore less and less, which yeah. I basically told them, because unfortunately, see it as a great hope, they have imploded because of financial issues. And the whole idea is if you can't run your own numbers, can you run my numbers? Okay, which is, which is one of the things. But hopefully they're coming back, we've got some money, but they've just said that they are for sale. I'm not sure exactly yeah. what's going on up there, okay? Um, 
I think while we all love to hate Nielsen, I have a basic belief that they're going to be around for a while, and I don't, I don't particularly hate them. I actually talk with them as I talk with Comscore. But they're going to basically be around. But what we really need, and I think was mentioned by Jane, is competition. Yep. Okay? Uh, and I think the competition is not going to come from the television space. It's going to come from the other spaces into things like television. Great. Okay. So if we did get to the Holy Grail and had cross me measurement, across everything, an attribution, which media would benefit the most in terms of dollars? That's going to be my final question. I would say that the media that's going to benefit the most oh, is one. Come on. visual. Visual. No, visual what? <laughs> visual. Uh, is it Dave Morgan? Is it the Wall Street Journal? Is it Facebook and Google? We are we are increasingly moving into a world where we're reading less and less and we're doing everything through pictures and video. I know, I have to just do a story okay. on video instead of uh, writing okay. it. Okay, it, no, it's, it's, just, it's, just pictures and, it, it, it's just pictures and video. So I would basically say anybody who can tell stories with pictures and video, uh, and I do believe, by the way, there's going to be a massive renaissance in content players yeah. because that's one of the things that is happening. I hate the word content. <laughs> All right, <laughs> stories. Oh, that's better. All right, that's a good note to end it on. <laughs> Thank you.